This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Get free access to Nebula, our new streaming service, when you sign up for CuriosityStream at the link below. For centuries, we've dreamed of exploring the mysterious realm of outer space. As our technology has advanced, we've gotten closer and closer to achieving that goal. We've sent humans beyond Earth to the surface of the moon, and we've spent months at a time aboard specially built space stations to learn more about the effects of zero gravity and outer space in general on the human body and mind. We're slated to send humans to Mars in just a few years. From there, who knows where our next stop will be? Of course, all this progress begs the question, when will we start exploring beyond the solar system? Unfortunately, the answer may be never. In this episode, we're going to take a look at some of the challenges to space travel beyond our home system, including some startling recent discoveries made by the Voyager probe and what they mean for the future of space travel. The Voyager probes are some seriously impressive machines. They were launched back in the 1970s and have been chugging along for over 40 years now, delivering amazing new information to entire generations of scientists. After years of gathering countless critical observations, in 2012, Voyager 1 became the first man-made object to enter interstellar space. What the Voyagers found there was something we never anticipated. But before we talk about that problem, let's consider the first major obstacle for both probes like the Voyagers and shorter-lived equipment like humans. Distance. Our solar system is massive. The distance from Earth to the Sun is impressive enough, at an average of 150 million kilometers. But that's just a tiny fraction of the rest of the system. From the Sun at the center to the inner fringe of the Oort cloud, you're looking at somewhere between 2,000 and 5,000 astronomical units, or 300 billion to 750 billion kilometers. And from the Sun to the outer reaches of the Oort cloud, the very edge of our solar system is a staggering 10,000 to 100,000 astronomical units, or 1.5 to 15 trillion kilometers. You can't even begin to wrap your head around that kind of distance. And think, that's just to get out of the solar system, which is a tiny blip in the Milky Way, which is an even tinier blip in the wider universe. Okay, so the solar system is big, so what? That doesn't mean we can't leave it eventually, right? Maybe. The key word there is eventually. Now that we know the distance from the sun to the outer edge of the Oort cloud, we can calculate some ballpark numbers for how long it would take to travel that distance. Let's start with the fastest object we've ever produced, the Parker Solar Probe. If everything goes according to plan, by 2024, the Parker Solar Probe will be the fastest spacecraft ever, by far. It's expected to reach speeds of almost 700,000 kilometers per hour. Assuming we could build a vessel capable of carrying humans at that speed, we could zip to the edge of the solar system in just 2,446 years. Crazy, right? The fastest space vessel we have, a tiny probe propelled by the immense gravity of the sun, would take almost two and a half thousand years to get to the actual edge of the solar system. But wait, didn't the Voyager probes already enter interstellar space? And they travel much more slowly than the Parker probe. Technically, yes, the Voyagers have passed beyond the sun's magnetosphere, which some consider the edge of the solar system. But the Oort cloud is really the container for the system. Whereas the planets orbit the sun in a flat plane, the Oort cloud is a giant sphere encompassing the sun, planets, and asteroid belts. Think of it like the Pokeball for our solar system. Anyway, we'll get back to the Voyager probes in a minute. For a more realistic number, let's look at the fastest spacecraft that can support humans. Currently, the record is held by the crew of the Apollo 10 on their moon mission. As they rocketed back to Earth, their vessel reached a speed of just shy of 40,000 kilometers per hour. That's the fastest human beings have ever traveled. If we assume we could build a vessel to support human life, a lot of it, that could travel at a constant 40,000 kilometers per hour, it would take 42,808 years. That is a very long time. Could we even build a vessel that could survive that long, let alone support hundreds of generations of humans for the journey? It would have to be completely self-sustaining. And now, thanks to the latest insights from Voyager, we have a new challenge to consider. On August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 began gathering data on the interstellar environment, the first spacecraft to do so. Now, seven years later, NASA has recently announced that the probes have passed beyond the heliosphere, the sun's magnetic field of influence, and emerged into a region of space far stranger than we could have imagined. As odd as it may seem, it turns out the sun's magnetic field actually protects us from cosmic rays, preventing a fairly large percentage of them from entering the solar system. Once the Voyagers passed beyond the heliosphere, they were subjected to the full force of this foreign electromagnetic radiation. The probes are fine. They're sturdy machines designed for the most inhospitable environments. But it's fascinating to see just how drastic the jump in radiation was as soon as they passed the threshold into this new region of interstellar space. But the EM radiation wasn't the only thing that spiked. 
the temperature also shot way up, like by tens of thousands of degrees. It turns out that the region beyond the sun's sphere of influence is full of superheated plasma, a sort of wall of fire surrounding our solar system. We always knew that traveling beyond our home star system would be very difficult. It's been almost half a century since the last person walked on the moon. Space is a challenge. Doing things in space takes time. But finding out that our solar system is surrounded by a cage of superheated plasma? That throws a bit of a wrench in things. The question is, how will this intensely irradiated environment affect future missions, unmanned and maybe eventually those crewed by humans? How will the machinery hold up under long periods of exposure to this super hot plasma? Is this radiation more dangerous than forms we're more familiar with? And if so, what new kinds of shielding will have to be developed to protect sensitive scientific instruments and even more sensitive human bodies? Well, it would seem that the sun has given us at least part of the answer. Our star keeps the solar system safe by exerting its magnetic force on those that press in from interstellar space. It shields our planet and our neighbors from foreign EM radiation. So could one possible solution be some kind of mobile EM field? It would have to be pretty strong to keep the stormy interstellar space at bay, but hypothetically it could be done. Of course, that technology is likely decades off at best. Not to mention the fact that developing a spacecraft that can sustain human life for the multi-thousand year voyage to the edge of the solar system is a massive undertaking by itself. So, are we trapped in a little cosmic bubble surrounded by an impassable wall of fire? Those of us alive today will probably never know for sure. There will be many challenges along the way, but the most difficult will be the sheer scale of the solar system. If you'd like to learn more about just how mind-bendingly huge our home system is, check out Miniverse on CuriosityStream. It's a really fun trip through a micro-sized version of our solar system, hosted by astronaut Chris Hadfield and guests like Michio Kaku. If you watch my videos, you'll know that I'm a big fan of CuriosityStream. It's an online streaming service with thousands of nonfiction titles from some of the best filmmakers in the game. I've recently partnered with CuriosityStream to build my new car show, Grand Test Auto, that I host with Joseph from Real Life Lore. Grand Test Auto is available right now on Nebula, a streaming platform built by and for independent creators like CGP Grey, Polyphonic, Real Engineering, Wendover Productions, and of course, Second Thought and Real Life Lore, among others. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, CuriosityStream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long CuriosityStream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. CuriosityStream is home to high production value documentaries and nonfiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're offering Second Thought fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com slash second thought. When you sign up for CuriosityStream, you get instant access to thousands of nonfiction titles like Miniverse, and you'll get to watch a bunch of new episodes from Grand Test Auto, as well as other great Nebula originals, like Working Titles, a series dedicated to breaking down popular TV show intros. By signing up for CuriosityStream, you'll be helping not just me, but the entire educational community, as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up using the link below. I promise you'll love it.